Okay. All right. <laughs> so these are our community engagement studies, um, conversations, roundtables with people who, you know, want to have more conversations about them because we know that we haven't had a chance to really have give and take. So we're interested in what your questions are and, and what your thoughts are on these things. And, you know, our process is moving forward. We're hoping to conceivably um, make a decision from the Board of Ed side, at least, whether or not to move forward and how to move forward by September. So, um, I'm sorry, did you read that last? That's okay. So um, I know you've come to some of the, the meetings right. and you've seen some of the presentations. So I'm assuming you're here because you have some thoughts and yeah, questions. I'm struggling with this fan. So you have to, oh, okay. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll I'm hearing talk a challenge. Got it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk directly you. at you, too. So that sometimes I it, that. it helps a lot to be able to see the person's mouth, yes. <laughs> even if you're not lip reading. I, like even somebody, I was in Scotland recently, and they had a strong accent. If I could see their mouths move, I could yeah, understand, understand it better. So I'll look at you too, and not just talk to you. Vice versa. <laughs> so um, the Board of Ed is having these roundtables to have conversations with people to hear what their thoughts and concerns are. So we're happy that you know you were able to come to some of the other meetings, so you have some information. We can also answer questions if there are issues that came up. So we brought a copy of the report. We have the facilities. You have a copy right there. So, Anything changed on these numbers? So before we make the vote, we will probably have to update the numbers for the ones we are most seriously considering, but at this point we haven't done that. At the meeting last week, we decided not to formally take any of those items off of the consideration. Um, there were some that were significantly less popular and probably will be taken off once we're all together to have that conversation. Um, we were down two board members this week and we felt that it um, might have been a little premature to, to actually vote on that, but we did all express our thoughts and opinions about which one of them we thought were more or less likely. Which, one so, were, which ones were you contemplating when discussing possibly removing? So the one that's renovate both schools as new for $27 million. Let me see what that number is. <laughs> so option two. Um, $27 yeah, that's almost as much as two schools brand new, so um, the renovate as new was less likely because that didn't seem like it was a good value. Um, we discussed option three because um, all school. Right, so if that option would build a new school on both sites and then demolish the existing schools to make room for parking. So that was that process of brand new and then demolish the other one and then move into it. So rather than <coughs> build new but two schools. And so that one they're contemplating potentially. So that one we're because we don't own Hall School, because that is owned by the Hall Foundation, we do not believe we will have the option of demolishing the Hall building. So while the other renovation options are still on the table, option three would demolish Hall. And so uh, our conversations with them have led us to believe that that is not an option. Uh, what does it mean? Option three will demolish it? Yes, option three would demolish Hall School. Then would that uh, local share whole, it says nine million, then so for demolishing nine million? The, what that does, the, the local and state share together, the nine million and the ten million, right? Mm -hmm. um, or the, I'm sorry, the state yeah, share. Nine. Yeah, nine million and the ten million together would build a new middle school next to Hall and demolish Hall to make room for playing fields and parking. That's what it means to replace the school on the existing site. So it's a full replacement, brand new building from scratch, but the only way to make that work is to then demolish the other building. There's not enough space on that site without uh -huh. demolishing the building. So, so that's what this option considered. So 19 million six hundred six. Hundred forty-four thousand four hundred five dollars. That's for that's demolishing whole school and building next to it brand new, and demolishing center school and building next to it brand new. Correct. That's How what that option entailed. That that's what it's costed out for that option. Yes. So uh, how about if we do not touch center school and demolish just whole school and build a new whole school? Then it's going to be half of it. For the town, it's going to be just 10 million. So you'd have to add the two hall schools, but then you still have to do something with center. Center needs renovation. So it would be those two hall costs 
um, to build new and demolish hall. If you did it the other way, or, and you'd still have to then do other work on center, whether you demolish center or didn't demolish center, you can't address the one school. And <laughs> but center, center is just 50 years old. So, so it is more like newer. 65. We can wait. It we is can newer. We can do it by parts. It doesn't mean, so the reason, the part that you just said, the demolishing hall, is not feasible. We can't do that. Because we don't own that building. Mm -hmm. So, the hall school is older and probably has more pressing needs. You could conceivably, like if you went with option one, which is just the capital improvements to, to look at it over time, you could spread those out and when the urgent thing happens, then address that and then prep for the next urgent action. So you could do that, but then that cost is going to be much higher than the 13.9 because you're spreading it out over time. This is option one costs out capital only, not the nice to haves, not the want to haves, the maintain the buildings to keep them from falling apart. You know, status capital quo. maintenance. It's status quo. Keep the roofs from leaking, keep the you know the floor joists sound, right? That's that maintenance one. And you could spread that out more, but it is still going to be more expensive than this. This still this capital improvement project, the way this is costed out, would have us still do a building project to ask for state reimbursement. So even like when we changed, we did the maintenance on the oil tank, we still had to do the same exact process. And you get an architect, and you got to do all the plans, and fill out all the paperwork, and then the state gives you money back. If we weren't going to ask the state for any reimbursement money, which would be kind of funny because <laughs> we're getting back 64%, we want to have. Well, that's state. not 64% from, it's 8 million and the state gives us only 1 million. So it's right. 9 so, million and so, we get 1, we get so, 10%. No, no. The Hall School total is like. Um, yeah, we have to be right like, option one. Yeah, option one. Hall School, that one million represents 64% of the total. That's why it's more. Is that right? Mm -mm. No. No, remember that not every project. Oh, right, right. The 64% the so is for certain, some of the projects. Only right, certain right, projects right, are right. reimbursable. So this 64% do not apply here. It does apply. But it, applies it applies to some, to some of the projects. Like project. whole, it does not apply in a whole. So it's right. up to 64%. Yes, not a yes. Up, yeah, I that's right. Yeah, up it's two. Up that's why we showed the totals and not just the percentages. Right. But again, if, we're talk, if we talk about this option one, mm -hmm. is the whole school in such a bad condition that we need to put 9 million like right now? Because I think at this point we really need the roof the boiler, so that's like priority. Right, there, 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 will, be, we see there, there will be, that's why I said we could spread it out. There will be priorities, you could spend. So we don't have to, to, we don't really have to put down in debt, we just can do from whatever we have, like one project at a time. Like, like for example, next year, we do the, we do the roof and the boiler. So two million we somehow handle without crazy increase for everybody in town. So, and then we do something else, and then we do, because Christina Myler, she, she managed to put million and a half in the reserve fund. So we do, it's possible for us to take that money out by a little bit without... You would still have a significant tax increase. So it's not possible to do that and keep our taxes flat because what we have in the reserve doesn't come close to what it would cost to do this. So you could spend down the reserve. No, but I mean, we this. don't have to spend nine million right away. We could do right, but if you spend, say we spent the say we spent the entire reserve in year one to take care of the urgent priorities. What do you do in year two? There's well, no but reserve the, then. But there is no need to put a new roof. But there are going to be other priority problems that but need to get like addressed. But not like roof. Roof is a really major well, yeah, one, right. and the so boiler. So we kind of, and then we just do regular CIP projects, how we manage but it. If we're talking that we need between the two schools, mm -hmm. a total project cost of 17 million, I don't think we can raise that even over 10 years out of taxes. Where do you see 17 million? Where the total project cost, the next to bottom box. Yeah, but again, center school is not in such a pitiful condition. Well, this is not the one to have. These are the must fixes. And they, you can spread it out a little bit, because they're not 
urgent tomorrow. The roof is going to fall in if we don't fix the sleep, right? So you're right that there are problems that are urgent. But even if we spread this out over five years, it's going to raise taxes significantly to make that happen. So I just want to make sure that it's clear that we don't have this full amount in the bank that we're not choosing to spend. There are, there are significant structural problems with both buildings that need to be addressed. What does that mean, structural? It's not, we're not painting the walls. We're not making it look nice. This is capital improvements as opposed to the nice to have fixes. We would like it to do a lot more than this, but this is only the maintenance basics. piece, the okay. basics. Didn't we have the list uh, Phil, didn't we have the list of everything that needs to be done in the right. beginning of the year? Mm -hmm. You gave us a brownish uh, piece of paper, like with a with roof, with a phone system, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So how much was the total project? I forgot. It was like around two million. That's not everything, now. But that was the That's most important, including the full roof, including the boiler. That was, that was immediate urgency for this year, but we also had the rest of the five-year plan that we presented to CIP, knowing that we wanted to highlight that there are additional problems coming down the road. I mean, this stuff These is not... These are $10,000 problems, too. Yeah. I, yeah, I that's right. That's a good um, Yeah. I think what I'm sensing is, my senses throughout all the meetings I've attended, is that this option one, mm -hmm. which is merely an option if we don't build new, but our compressing our capital project schedule for both buildings into what we're going to do projects now. Uh, that's my sense of it. I'm sensing the community is looking for a 0.5 option <laughs> that would be on this list. Um, where, as Elena suggests, we would do what the community's always done. We, we upgrade the buildings as our CIP budget allows. Um, and what's good to me about that process, having been on CIP for about 15 years, um, is that if, as you say, there are high priors at the school, well then the loser is wreck, <laughs> you know, or, 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 or the town budget or the public works department or whatever the case may be. Um, but it allows the community to prioritize. Um, I, 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 I feel like that's lacking on this, it's, not, it's probably of no interest to Friar Associates. They want the biggest project possible for their largest percentage. Well, uh, to be I fair, work with a lot of architects, be, I know them very well. To be fair with Friar, we asked them for right. the capital project. We didn't ask them for you know, the, 20 different, the 20 different variations and, nor, nor is and flavors it, Nor is it where they could probably help us uh, very much. So um, my, my suggestion would be uh, to have that option on it. What I like about that option, too, is it gives us time to see what's going to happen economically. Um, right now our, our our grand list or our tax base is very depressed, as everyone knows, by the foundation issue and other factors, um, lack of growth and so forth. Um, and demographically, we know what's going to happen. Phil's been saying we've been stuck at the 430 student level for two or three years now. Is that going to change? I happened to be at the economic development the other evening, and there's a talk of a 60-unit uh, single-family apartment complex going in right by Paul School. <laughs> Interestingly, um, so you know, so there's all kinds of variables out there, and I, I like the idea of in times of uncertainty not jumping into large-scale projects. I know the state reimbursement is attractive, um, but reimbursement shouldn't drive what we do. Um, and well, that, that's one one comment I want to make. But that, and I, and I guess what I'm wondering is, timeline-wise, you're having these uh, meeting uh, town meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. These community feedback. engagement roundtables, yeah. Throughout the summer, or is it? You know, no so, one's here, obviously. <laughs> it's uh, a so lovely day terrible today. Terrible time right. <laughs> um, in, the, in the middle of the summer. Um, will we have some in September? So there are, I believe, four of them scheduled. We already had one this week. This one. There's two more scheduled over the course. How was the next turnout of the one earlier this week? Uh, we had two folks show up earlier this week, so we're 50% of the way there, right? <laughs> so, um, 
And on a Saturday, you know, I think it's I'm not horribly surprised. We have one more full presentation and community engagement meeting at the Senior Center, which is next week, right? So the, the Board of Ed has um, two meetings. We have one in August and one in September. If we wish to move forward with making a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, our goal is to have a vote in September. So we are having these meetings now to get feedback from the community. We have the survey out now to get feedback from the community. We've been having community engagement meetings and having conversations and you know, we had a table at Willington Day, we had a table at Science Night. We've had a number of opportunities for the public to be involved. Um, and they can always come to our board of ed meetings. You know, there's there's different opportunities for, they can write us emails. There are things that other people, um, you know, other options that people have taken advantage of in different ways um, to give us feedback to help the board of ed make a decision about whether or not we want to move forward with the building project. Now remember that this process is not the board of ed's project. Correct. What happens is we, the next step would be we make a decision whether or not we want to recommend moving forward with creating a building committee. The Board of Selectmen creates the building committee Correct. and you know chooses who's on that. The Board of Ed will likely be represented in that because it is related to other educational needs. You want to make sure you have people on the building committee that understood the needs in the schools. But it's not a Board of Ed decision. It's our decision whether or not we want to move forward with the recommendation. So that almost is the start of another phase of the process. This is kind of the engagement process. And, and in reality, we've kind of been in this for two years since we put this piece out there. We started these conversations in 2016 before we hired Fryer to do this in 2017. So some of the conversations about do we need a school, new school have been ongoing for you know three years now. So um, we're getting pretty good feedback. Well, I feel like we're, can we get feedback from everybody? No. You know, uh, and the voters will have a chance to participate in this in various other ways in the future. But the question about whether or not we want to recommend to the town is our next step and our goal is to have that vote in September. Just out of curiosity, the impact of that summary, yeah. um, what has the feedback been from the electronic poll, uh, the online poll? That, uh, has it been so, so the poll is open until August 1st. So, so, we won't so, the final. so we took a look at some of the draft just to see where people were to ha inform our conversation. I can talk through if you want. Uh, I, well, we'll, we'll just talk about it for now, but if, we wanted, if you wanted to see where we were with things, we're happy to talk in more detail because it was something that was shown at the Board of Ed meeting last week. But, um, so... Did you have any, did you have any meaningful input or is it, or is it like... 20 people respond. <laughs> no, 160. There's 160 responses oh. or so. So, but do we have names on those people? No, and one of the things that you missed yeah. at the meeting is that we've already discussed that. We discussed that both at the community engagement meetings and also with experts in polling to say that whether you have a name on it or not, you can still game the system. We don't believe that people are gaming the system. We don't believe we have a robot submitting option one, option one, option one, right? This isn't that type, not that we're that popular that anybody would create a bot for that. That would be a, you know, a, a, little, a little advanced for, her, for our small town. But um, when you do a survey, it provides one level of input. You have to take that with a grain of salt because there is always the chance of fraud because we're not requiring uh, a way of checking. Even if someone made up Oh, I'm, I'm Michelle Cunningham, and here's my address. You know, somebody else could pretend they're my husband and put that in. Somebody else, I could pretend that I'm my neighbor. It is, I'm not saying that, that that's impossible. We have to take that into account when we're receiving that information. Thank you, Bill. Because, oh, oh, sorry. Oh. No, I Making understand. the exercise here. So, so we did we did bring up your comment and mention it in the meeting. I don't know if you were able to, to no, follow this stuff. No, it's not loaded yet. Okay, but the um, we discussed that with a survey expert from UConn who encouraged us to do the survey the way we are, keeping it anonymous, because you will get more responses from people. We were more worried about not getting enough responses than getting responses that were uh, had names, but 
were then still not checkable to see if that was really that person who's putting that name. But there is an option to put your name in. Yeah, but I no, mean, I, I answer one and I put my name in. I know. Yeah. But so. the thing is, if we do it online, then there is a real limitation. You could easily do it because it's connected to the, it's a big job to to fraud that result. So that's why online, mm -hmm. I think it was okay. But the papers which are over here or distributed around the town, I don't think they are correct um, gathering of data. We have very few paper surveys. Well, I just, it's okay, but then it's good. But otherwise, it's very easy to fraud it. It's, it it's, I would not consider it as a reliable data if we rely on the information gathered through the papers. I wouldn't rely on it. Email is okay. I agree with that. It's that it gives a certain level of freedom. There's a paper form? Uh, paper yeah. form. We, we put some papers, and, you know, paper copies, and the people could bring it to town hall and drop off a paper, oh, drop it in the, the put it in the box. So we've done it in a couple of places oh, because yeah, not yeah, everybody right. has electronic access. And we didn't want to but discriminate like, against people who for don't instance, have electronic we're, access. We're going to do a presentation at the, at the Senior Center so Wednesday. I think we should take paper copies because a lot of them won't. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have about 14 that have been, we're taking the paper copies and we're coding them. So if they come into my office, they're coded Superintendent 1. Sometimes they have a name. So, so it'll they're, say they're, whoever. They're where, coded to the location where they were where dropped they came off. From, so they if they see. put their name on it too, yeah. we'll put their name, then Superintendent 1, so we know exactly where it came from. If it came from the library and they didn't put their name on it, it just says Library 1. Library too, so we know where they're right. So are. we're tracking to know how many are paper versus electronic. Um, if we wanted to, we could look at the data from those two things to see if they were significantly different. I would definitely would like the data, the final data on which you're going to we're going to base a decision to be separated and electronically collected and paper collected. Also, because some people filled up, like I did not even day to fill up the paper because I already filled up electronically. Right. Well, but some people yeah. may do it twice, double, three. So I'm, I'm not, just because they forgot, or just because they thought maybe that it's, you know, that maybe it's a different thing. Maybe email is one, this is another. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it, it opens the way for incorrect data. I would agree with you, except I would take any of the ones that we were physically present to see done, like at the senior center, and put them in with the electronic. Right. Because I don't, I do think there's a chance that uh, seniors in town may have a different opinion, and I wouldn't want to, in any way, diminish what that looks like by saying, "Oh, these are not accurate," because they could be just as accurate, and they may have a particular opinion we need to take into account. So I don't, I, I'm fine with segregating the data to be able to look at it both ways, and also look at it as a whole, because the more information we have, the more we can disaggregate and, and understand that the better but um, I would think that if we were physically present that should count the same yeah would that yeah, I, agree. Okay with you? I agree about 40% 40% of the surveys right now have names on them. oh that's wonderful yeah and only 14 of the 160 have been in a paper so far but I would you know if you're gonna do a, a breakout yeah, um, I, the, the senior, the senior people go with the electronics because you're there with them and you know that's not there's no chance of fraud okay so the senior people who are in the senior center, they live there? Yes. Or you, so how are they going to be influenced by the taxes? I don't so, think significantly. So we're going to go to the senior center yes. and do a presentation for them because maybe they haven't been able to come out to the school. I, you know, I understand it, but, but if the so, taxes increase, are they going to have influence by it? I don't think so. Well, they certainly pay taxes. Senior they, centers, it's almost nothing. But but whether you pay taxes or not, you're a resident of town and have an equal it. right to vote. I understand so. it. No, I, I is absolutely I understand okay. it. But I mean we still have to focus more on people outside of there who really gonna carry I disagree. Burden. I disagree. I don't think that we should weight taxpayers higher than people who don't pay taxes. If you pay ten times the amount of taxes I do, do you get ten votes to my one? No. Well, no. That's so so just because I've lived in town my whole life and have been involved, I should my say should be exactly equal to everybody else's, whether I pay taxes I or agree. not. I agree. I I I just wanted yeah. to throw this information there for the yeah. thinking. I have the point, Elena, and, and we we had this conversation in the last roundtable discussion, is that 
we're trying to get this word out to as many people as possible. That was one thing we talked about with the two people that were here. And we actually showed them the voter data from the May referendum. And the majority of the voters that were there were age 50 to 70. That's the majority of people that voted that day. And are we getting two people right now that are actually voting? Are those the same people that come to everything? Peter's been to a lot of things, you know. Four we know, but we know. More than the average citizen by a lot. That's the point. Is <laughs> how do we get beyond the people that you know? I see Bob Shabbat at meetings. I know he's he's. he's well, no, no. I how, how do we get out to the whole community? Well, I'm trying to get that question. Um, the senior population in town is a fairly rural one, uh, and a significant portion of our our town population. How are we reaching? Um, they, I don't get on the internet as much. Um, so has anything gone out? They're not. They don't have children in the school system. So they don't get right. a backpack and stuff. So they may be connected to. I saw something chronicle. To if if they yeah. have the internet, and that's an if. If they have the internet, they might be in email. They might have access to the Willington town email list. So we sent this out through the town email, right. not just the school email, right? So that's that if. We've had it in the newspaper. We have the paper surveys in a number of places all over town. Including at the tax right. collector's window. We did not have Which the budget. Time, so. Right. We do not have the budget to go mailer. door to door or for a mailer. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking of my own parents or my in-laws. Mm -hmm. They respond to things they get in mm -hmm. the mail. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we, um, we discussed it and we would have liked to have done that. You know, we finished this year out on, you know, we had a uh, spending freeze for more than the second half of the year. We had, we had a lot of things we did not spend money on this year that we wanted to. That would have been, you know, considered further if we'd had any any wiggle room in the budget. We had none. That's so we had less than that. There's basically no money for this whole process. So. Yeah. Unlike doing the, you know, plan of conservation and development. And that hired a consultant. What Mansfield yeah. does when they do a new school, you know, we, we were really doing it on as, as, like as economically yeah. as possible. I, I, yeah. uh, Owens, I think this is very important to reach yeah. people. Um, I hope that everybody who comes to these or who, who knows people is talking about it. So I'm hoping that if your parents live in town, you've talked to them and you've brought them your phone and had them enter the survey there. Ask them and you can enter well, the survey. Well, I was survey. confused by that. My, 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 wife's, my wife's yeah. in-laws, for example, um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I thought I couldn't do that. Like, if, if it's not from their device which they don't have. <laughs> right. They there's, can't, there's not a problem. They'd be like double voting if they voted from from my phone or like, no. It's not it's not the it. it's not the equipment. It's the person. So if you want to have your mother in law, you know, oh, with your that. phone walking well, I, I, I didn't realize that. Thank you for Yeah, no, we're uh, hoping that everybody I, 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 is they, talking they, about they, they, they said this to me possible. and I said, Well you can't be voting <laughs> That's why we didn't collect because yeah. you collect you you're required to sign in yeah. and it was gonna it was really if, gonna inhibit people. You can do a survey that requires an email, right? But it, and therefore it would then only allow one from your email yeah. address. But I also could look but. at the fraud aspect of it, and this is to you, Elena, is that I can see the times entered. So if I see times entered, we sent out through the town email system, and then I see that some get entered. That makes sense. If I see some Friday night, all of a sudden it's survey after survey after survey after survey after survey, after survey coming <laughs> in, wrong. I'm going to look at those and go, mm, Saturday morning, Peter's at right. the dump saying, click the I button. I can see the times. I can't see their email address because they're not required to log in. Right. But I can see the times they're submitted. And Timestamp. what those those surveys look at, you can look at them individually. That's and if they're exactly point. the same, you question. And somebody clicking away. Yeah. You still have you, to go through it. Yeah, but you cannot see the email. Correct. No, you did not require the email. So technically, the person can fill up, for example, one today, next one tomorrow, technically, and you will not see that it's the same person. This is one piece of information that you're looking at. Sure. Uh, and people on either side of the issue could answer that way. So there's nothing that says any potential discrepancy or fraud in the, the that piece of data would be weighted on one side or the other. Yeah, I just, I, for some reason, yeah. I thought that the electronic survey is more reliable because it's connected with an email, but because it is not, yeah. then I, I would have doubts on that too, but, but that's okay. 
Can we can we change it? I have another. I want to stick with Peter because Peter's the sugar <laughs> for the community. Peter, can I see <laughs> I just want to address too because you just said how to get how to get the word out to people. I, I think the intent, and this would be my recommendation, if anything moves forward beyond September, people have said there's too many options on the table right now. Once you get down and you narrow options down, and you make the board makes a recommendation. Once it's at if there's a recommendation, that's where I think there should be money out there. They should, the, the town should put money towards a mailer to everyone with an explanation of, here's what we're looking at. Here's this what, is the impact right, we have this on your taxes. This taxes. is what it would buy. This is a real number. Just having talked to people in town, is it a source of confusion right now? Um, yeah. I think many and especially because we haven't updated these people, numbers in two years. So there's a lot of confusion. Well, sure. not only that, I don't think they recognize that they're not going to get to choose. <laughs> You're going to choose on the board, correct? We're going to make a recommendation. The building committee chooses. Well, I understand that, but the, the first step the is first the board step, the saying, this is, is what we want to do. This is what we I are think recommending many to the board. Think, oh, I'll get to decide from the six options, and I don't think that's clear. Um, I don't. I don't know that there's that many people that are that engaged that they'd even so. know that there are seven options. <laughs> so should we? Should we? Just, well, just, you know, yeah, yeah. I, but I, we should I, definitely be. I clear talk to people, and I'll say, you know, you, everyone's seen this. As some, well, many people I've talked to have seen this and said, "Oh, we have to choose from six, right?" I'm like, uh, "No, the board of ed will." Yeah. You know, I, I'll encourage them to go to a board of ed meeting, but that's a hard. And task. and for right now, in the survey, those options are out there. We're asking information about those options. So this is the feedback chance for the public to tell us how they feel about the differences, you know, should we go two schools or one school, should, you know, so it's the survey so, now that's their chance to So do you have a breakdown on the 160 and how, how it looks right now? Just, can, can you share that? You want to just give a, yeah. a quite... Uh, I mean, it's pretty fast. I mean, if you yeah. can see this, I can spin this around. Yeah. Um, Here, I, what, I can press the down button if you want to move it closer. This is what was shared And it's basically it's just by something. question. It just says some, some of the information and how many surveys went out. Can you see that? Okay, yes, I can. One yeah, okay. Was there. So that was what was there as of the date of this when I did this. Yeah, this was for the board meeting. The locations of where they're at. Um, there's a whole bunch of there people that have put their names, and then there's a lot of people that have put comments, which is good. The yeah, board we didn't did discuss any of the comments. Look at the comments. Yeah. Um, so this is just, are you familiar with the survey, was one of the questions. And so it would get okay. about. So get pull closer. Yeah, pull closer. Um, and this is about 90% uh, are saying they have some knowledge or so lots of some level of awareness. Right. Correct. And so we're not analyzing the data based on whether they're aware or not. We're not discounting people who have no knowledge correct. of the survey, but we're just using it for information. Are we getting the word people out. who are you know they're hearing about us? Correct. So that's about. So that makes sense. The 160 is probably somewhat engaged, so, you're they, yeah. so your pie chart reflects and that. We, right? And we okay. linked it. Back, and we linked the survey so people could go look at the. The information we wanted them to so look this at is the online? facility survey. This yeah. is just what was presented, and I did not make copies for the board. And the reason why is because it's still preliminary. Is that link? But, but, but all we didn't want anyone to think that oh, it's closed. We're done. We're right. Because no, what I meant is that this and this is all online. So people can find information on the right. line. Yeah. Right. And the the information on the facilities and page. Getting on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so we tried to make it as accessible okay, as so possible. Everybody seems to know about. So it. how familiar are you with the facility needs and the process that we're using? Again, the ninety three percent show some poor, well informed on about the process and the needs. Okay. So this question was about um, the performing the minimum needed building maintenance. So no renovation and no school. So that's really the option one piece. That's the capital but, but, maintenance. But that's still compressing it all into some form of a project that's reimbursable by the state. We didn't say that. We said, I would only support performing the minimum needed building maintenance projects. We okay. didn't say whether it's spread out or whether it's immediate, but it's saying, I don't want renovation or a new school. That's what this question is asking. So it could also could be less gotcha. than option one. It could be less than option one. It could be option one spread out. It could be so that's this is saying that's fifty two. Fifty two percent said they would be strongly disagree with doing option, option one. one. And on top of that, the regular disagree is another twenty one percent. So seventy three point two 
disagree or strongly disagree with doing nothing or, or doing limited. option one, limited. And uh, the 10% are neutral. And they forgot because it was so long, a long yeah. time ago. Um, for me. I forgot until yeah. I saw this. I, I forgot like, the questions. questions. I forgot the questions. Yeah. Do we have on that questionnaire? Do we have a question to do nothing? No. Like, like, do, like. That's the minimum. Like, use yeah. it as it is. This is the well, minimum. minimum that means this. It well, doesn't. No. It could be less because that is that's, a, that's a big million dollar bonded project. Doing the, and I think this is what you were talking about before. Doing the minimum. Five. Could be option one, but it also could because you're not doing anything ex extensive, be to like building or renovation. But minimum could be just the CIP projects every year, and not necessarily that. And this is what you were referring to before: is that next year CIP spends about five hundred fifty thousand a year. What projects do you put into that? And what do you get? And you just keep plugging along. That really could be linked to that. Right? But that said, if they do about half a million a year, that's for the whole town. Correct. Even if the town ate that up every year and we ignored the roads and everything else in the town, we still wouldn't get through the list of things that we think are important to do for 20 years. So, it's so prior. It's not new. Right, right. Friars, I think, no, no but for 20 years, because the, the right. cost is going to go up every year. It would take Correct. us 20 years to get the schools up to where we think they need to be for the minimum mm -hmm. of structure, not for the one of these. But so, so that's the limitation of doing less, is that you really have to deal with substandard schools until well, the time is thrown. That, that, that would be my, <laughs> my take on that. With all due respect. <laughs> this is a conversation, and that's why... I, I, I could walk a home and spend into any one of our homes, jeans. and they would come up with double the value of your house and absolutely essential. No, just pull up a chair. So, so, mm -hmm. yeah. We need, so, to, we need to think that we're writing right. salt. But, but this question is the anywhere from do nothing and CIP through capital uh, capital improvement projects. We're talking about the, some of the, the preliminary results of the survey. So one of the things we asked was, I would only support performing the minimum needed building maintenance projects. So no renovations, no new school. And what percentage? And 73.2 disagree or strongly disagree, 16.6 .6 strongly agree or agree. So that's where it is right now. The survey is open until August 1st, but that's what we're hearing is that people uh, pretty strongly have opinions. When did the survey start? Like on survey. Oh, I'd have to go back. Yeah. Can uh, we keep June. it longer? Late, early June. June. It, was right, it was right around the It was. Day. It was at least in May. Yeah, it was at some point. Because I, don't know I, I mailed Brian's in before like, we left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm on your computer. No, I mailed Brian's in before I left for Colorado. Yeah, so, so, that was so May. it, is, it yeah. was May at some point. But I not wonder, early. Can we make it longer? Not Because people are like in May, June, July, August. That's like, oh, nobody is here. It's, can we keep it to September? Can we prolong and give people? I don't people think so because we months. need because we need to narrow down enough to reprice some of these. We need it. We need time to ask Friar to give us some updated numbers. If we're going to make a decision and to recommend something in September, are we going to pay for it? We're gonna the price? To. We're going to have to. Yeah. How much you would cost us? Depends on how many options we give them. If we ask, you know, how much would it cost for one option? Can you reprice this? That's one set. If we ask for seven options, that's probably seven times, or at least five times, the cost to revisit that. So we'll have to Do decide in August. Do we have an idea August. of how much it's going to cost? No, that that's, that's, that's for a conversation in August. We don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I want to get through this because there aren't sure. that many questions. So um, the question four is, I would support having all our students in one preschool to eight. So that's the difference between options one through three and four through six is the two schools versus the one school. So this is saying, how do you feel about the two school versus the one school? Do you want a separate middle school? Um, and the one school also had 67% uh, strongly agree or agree or, or disagree. So remember, the one school is the way that we get some operating savings. Mm -hmm. If we keep two schools, we don't have we don't have any operating savings. So um, this is saying that um, people are accepting of one school versus two. So as you talk about savings, uh, you, ju you just mentioned, we did not talk about it now. So we were talking about 500,000 savings. 
and we know that the budget is not going to stop. We're still going to fight the budget. So that savings will give us really savings within a couple of years, and then we're still going to be at the ground zero with fighting the same budget, the same insurance increase, whatever it comes. As you as you mentioned on some community engagement meetings. Right. So that savings is not really. It's like temporary help for two years maybe. So so what happens? The budget. Every year goes up a little bit. Inflation goes up well, every year a little bit. Well, fifteen point like fifteen percent. I'm doing a long term. Yeah. Long term, it goes like this. Goes. If we have an operational savings, it drops us down, maybe to where we were a couple years back. It's still going to keep going up. Yes. So we can't stop the yes, inflation and increases, but it will give us respite for a little while until it catches up to itself. Yeah. It's not going to yes. eliminate the need for an operational budget. So that's for a couple of years, a little bit, but the result right. is that the whole purpose of all this project is not finding savings, because there are no real substantial savings. Correct. Correct. It's a different reason, because some people I talk to said, oh, we're going to save, but not really, it's different reason. Right. Not the same. Right. That's it, I just wanted to make it that's, clear. Yes, I agree with you. No that, is, that, that is probably okay. not the only driving factor for. It's not the driving you know, factor. A lot of people, point. for a lot of people, in how they decided this question. I just wanted to put that in there because that is something that I know Peter had asked about previously. So the reason for us to do it all, it's really just to uh, bring our schools to the higher level, like structural. Just the, just the physical safety and, and renewing of our school facility. No, right. no really goal to save money on it. Correct. The reason I think people are looking at a renovation or a building new is to provide a high quality facility to provide for the needs of our students and provide a high quality education. This, well, is, this, comes, back, this comes back to the students and what we think the students need. And how we can provide a high quality education. I can't so, agree with so, that though, strongly, well, <laughs> because I think that golden walls do not provide a high level of education. Good teachers, good programs provide. But if well, you have to keep pouring money into a facility that doesn't, and, and there are certain things that the buildings don't really have that modern buildings do have, it does detract from the education. I'm well, a retired teacher, so I can tell you that. Oh, I, that's, that's absolutely, but if we build a new school, then money are taking already, then we have really no money towards new programs and new education. So it's both ways. So it's, it's, not, really, it's, not, a, it's not related not an, to the it's education. It's not an either or. If you have the perfect building and you cannot put staff in that building, then you cannot provide a high quality education. Okay. Good you, staff, good programs. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, is that if you can't, yeah. if it's one way, if it's the other way, and you have only staff in a building that's falling apart, you also can't provide a high quality education. So what we're looking for is what's the right level? Where do we as a community want to move forward to provide a high quality education for our students? That's the mission of the Board of Education, is to meet the students' needs in a way that's good for our town. And we know that high quality education is what draws people to move into a town or can make people move away if it's not. So for what we're all taxpayers and considering citizens and what we all want is to make sure we're providing a high quality education. So the, how we look at this, I think more people are looking about what it provides to the students rather than are we going to save money or not. So that was how I was answering your question that I was agreeing with you <laughs> about I don't think the savings is what's driving people in their decision making so much as a more complex mix of facilities, needs, yeah. education. Yeah. And, it ha and it can't be taken separately without thinking about what do we do with the operating budget. We did not have enough money this year to move forward with the programs we wanted to. We had to cut severely to make this year end where it did. We did not have enough money in this past year's budget to do we what we needed really to cut do. The programs. We we yes, cut back we, we yeah, cut we back did. severely. There were a lot of things. There was there was curriculum we didn't do. There was professional development we didn't do. Uh, yes. we, there were a lot of things we didn't do. I, yeah, yeah, I, I could, meant we did right. not cut any programs provided directly to kids. That, um, 
Well, no, we cut back. There were there were materials in classrooms uh, that materials, but yeah. not. I'm talking we, about like educational. Like we did not take any teachers away. No, so we did that's not. what that's what we I did mean. not cut any teachers yeah. because of the financial issues. Yeah, why but, I ask? But my point is, is that I that understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I ask. Well, I talk to many, many people. Mm -hmm. Just really, that's my summer. I really talk to a lot of people. <laughs> And many people who have children in homeschool, mm -hmm. they face me with one question: What, what's wrong with homeschool? I said it's good, but it's their opinion. They may not know. They are like you, you know. They just use whatever they have. But I know the whole process started like four years ago with mm -hmm. one goal: to find savings. So that's why people who are not related to schools, they still look at it like like this project could be a saving source and that's it no it kind yeah. of drifted from it it's not already it has nothing to do with savings it's different goals that i just wanted to make sure that people have that's that fair. understanding i think that's fair except that four years ago when we started this conversation it wasn't about saving money four years ago some of the demographics looked like we were going to continue on a downward track and have fewer and fewer and fewer students that has changed since those demographic projections. So our initial conversation was not about saving money. It was about providing good quality education to the dwindling number of students that we had. So that was, but we talked more at that time about one of the benefits of bringing them all together in one building would also have savings. So hey, come on, but, Do you but there, is, so, there is a way, if you think long term, it will save money because if we do nothing, I mean, our cost per pupil right now is quite high compared to other districts. And um, if we do nothing, it's going to become a crisis in five or ten years. Yes. And so uh, it will cost exponentially more if we wait five or ten years. Well, no, I mean, why? We're not talking that we are ignoring the problems. The people are talking, um, I'm just representing those whom, whom I talk to, uh, about keeping up with a regular CIP project, sometimes challenging, sometimes less, but without putting a great debt on the town. Uh, it doesn't it mean is, we ignore and we do not do anything. Right, but as it is, we're not meeting all of the CIP projects. That, there's a road in, uh, is it Schofield Road? That has been on the, the CIP list for 20 years. And it's not being done because we always have to prioritize and the amount of money that it's going to cost to, to get to one of these options. And we can't leave it alone um, because we're, we're paying for two old buildings that are, uh, particularly Hall School, that would cost a huge, you know, I mean, if the longer you wait, the more money it's going to cost because everything goes up over time. Um, and. We CIP is not is not going to get us anywhere near any of this. Yeah, but just, just this week there was a town meeting. Well, obviously not this. Yeah. So just just this week there was a town meeting about a new mower. We have to replace a mower, so we have to lease another very expensive piece of equipment. I'm on CIP. The vehicles and the vehicle leasing pretty much has a stranglehold on the CIP agenda before we even sit down to talk about schools or roads or anything. Because so we have to pay the lease payments before me, we have yes, that first. Okay. The structure is set up in such a way that there's very little wiggle room. So, you know, are we going to buy three three scotch tape dispensers or four, you know? Well, those are about prioritizing choosing. But, well, it is, but, then, but then in this, in this town I feel like, you know, the, the vehicle, you know, structure is such that that's always going to be a huge cost. For the town. And I think Lori's point was that deferred maintenance on infrastructure gets more and more expensive. You can patch something and maintain it if you patch it early. If you ignore the patch, it gets worse and worse and worse. You wind up digging up or repaving or tearing up the whole roof or whatever it is. So when you defer maintenance, the fix gets worse. It's kind of like if you don't go to the doctor for preventive care, you wind up in the ER. I think there are people saying that we're at the ER now and we need to start paying for that cost. So, is I just want to clarify. Uh, center School was built in the 50s. 52. 52. So it it's 67 years old. Yeah. It's, right. But it's not a... That's old as I am. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not being a 50 year school, too. For years, We've got so a couple of like, questions more. I just wanted to get through all of these while yeah, we're all here together. So, so I'm kind of OCD we were talking about finishing it. <laughs> so we had talked about renovating to like new. So if you're looking on the list, let me look at the pieces. So, option two. Right. That, well, this is one of our schools. Option two is renovating to like new for two of our schools. So the renovating is like to new is options 4A and 4B. It's one of the schools, it's not both of the schools. So this is the asking questions, would you rather renovate, right? So this, we'd already asked the question about the one school versus two. This is, would you rather renovate to, so that we can separate versus build new? How do people feel about renovation? And this was a little bit more split. 44% strongly agree or agree. 32% disagree or strongly disagree. So this is a little bit more even still leaning towards renovation versus not renovating. And those assumptions, like do we have to buy more land? If we put both schools in center school, we will need more land or no? Yes, and that is included in the costs to some degree. I don't I'm not that. sure that all of the site costs are, but there are other pieces connected to this. I think it is. I can pull I, up, I I can don't pull think up it's the budget. Included, yeah. I think that the land purchases are not included anyway in these options. Yeah. They, they, would, they would have to be added towards the price. If we're going to recost them, they might look at the changes in the cost of those properties and that maybe that number might adjust. C4A and 4B say yeah. and mean, acquisition of property. Can I see that? Yeah, you want to find the specific numbers? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going through this while he looks through the 400 pages. But that 32%, that 32 against that question could either be because, to Peter's point, they don't want to spend anything on renovation, or it could be that they favor a new school, so they don't right. want to say. You, you cannot, you don't you know cannot the say 32 right. response is. Right. Just $750,000 in options 4A and 4, in both option 4A and 4B for land acquisition. And there's 200, uh, $225,000 for, for site development. For site development. There's plenty so in there for site development. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is kind of the alternative. We talked about renovation. Six is about building new. So this, both cases, they're comparable because it's one school, it's not two. And this one, again, is more leaning towards building one new school. 60% strongly agree or agree. And 30% disagree or strongly disagree. And again, you can't know whether they disagree because they'd rather renovate or disagree because they think we should go with CIP and maintenance. But it shows the difference between question five, which is 44% for renovate, 60% for build new. So that shows the difference between where people's preferences are on those options versus the build new and the renovate. Remember option four, A and B, is the renovate. Option five and six are build new, but five is really uh, what this is, okay? Excuse me. Question seven asks, I would support building one new preschool through grade five, so this is option six one new building through grade five, and then pay for students in grades six through eight to attend school in a neighboring town, but we would lose the decision making. It's not regionalization, it's the tuitioning out of students. Um, and this was the strongest of all of the answers, that 81% would disagree or strongly disagree with tuitioning out the sixth to eighth graders. Um, Did you have a question? Yes, yeah, so before I test the um, For Bill, oh, um, this whole regionalization piece um, is something we don't have to discuss with Friar. That's something we we can explore on our own, correct? And the Board of Ed has explored that in past years, if you remember. Uh, I do remember, I remember, Dave, that? and okay. the a whole Mansfield <laughs> option. Okay. I'm just wondering, Bill, is, is there something closer to home? on a smaller scale, less this, I'm not fond of these big state mandated solutions. Um, I, I think one has always been successful because we've done things on our own. Um, like for example, Union built a new grammar school fairly recently, uh, I think in the last five years. 
they're fairly close to us. Could we do just sharing of resources and grades? They have the same anomalies we do with weird slights like you were talking about, Michelle. Um, where we don't regionalize, we just cooperate. <laughs> we just do stuff without having to say, State of Connecticut, we're checking in to see if we should regionalize. Who wants to do that? They're just going to put bureaucracy and mandates on us. Why can't we say, oh, you guys have no second grades this year, and we have two. <laughs> so you know, could we do things like that with, say, a union or an Ashley? They're more similar to us than the Mansfield megalopolis that you know, I, I don't think we fit very well with. I think the board will have to determine if none of these options are feasible. We're going to have to look at what uh, And I get, I get the board, but what do you yeah. think, though? If the standpoint you can key shared. Right, but the decision is the board's decision. Well, just not, I just want to be clear. His opinion and like, his expertise is useful to us, but it's I'm not the like, like, Do decision. superintendents do that? I think it's easier to, and you mentioned second grade, it's easier to keep staff, number one, when you have consistency. Sharing resources when you talk about HR, things like that, I think that's easier to do. Um, you look at, you know, buying subscriptions together, easier to do. I'm not so sure, and I think this is the same saying that, that people want to send their kids. One year you're in Union, the next year you're back in Wellington. I'm not so sure they want that. And the superintendents that are in this region that I've talked to would gladly take our kids, but not give us uh, uh, any sense. Of course. If they had space. And yeah, some if of they those had that space, do. correct. You know, they, there would be a fee to it, and it's there's, but there's no guarantee to it. You know, they, they give you the, the, the one year, I'll take your sixth graders, but the next year, year if I don't have room or we change something, you don't have those options. So, I think it takes a pretty big conversation to do it well. No, I don't think anybody's done it well in the state here, to be honest with you. You've seen that attempted in a couple towns where they've tried to regionalize and it's failed. The Connecticut's home rule, one town, one everything. Yeah. But I think a lot of the state regionalization conversations that were had earlier this year, um, which didn't go anywhere in the state for a lot of reasons, and I don't think will ever be mandated, but might be incentivized. Um, those conversations included options that we already do. We share a business office with the town. We already find a lot of, yeah. of uh, shared resources with the town that some of these we're going to require. They should ask us how to do it because we're already doing it well. You know, we have a lot to say that we've already done. Who goes to us on that one? Right, exactly. And we could be telling the state. The we just yeah, doing. exactly. So, so I think that we are pretty smart about doing what we can within the town. To, to be smart about how we use our resources that way. And, and, I, and I, along with that, Peter, um, I, I think it really wreaks havoc with kids to have those kind of transitions where you go somewhere else a year and then you come back. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we paid tuition to two high schools before we joined the O'Smith. And we didn't have, um, we didn't have much, uh, we didn't have any say, and one of the reasons that ended up stopping was Bolton, every time they came up with a budget crunch, they hiked the tuition on Wellington until Wellington finally said, we're not sending our kids there. The kids who started can finish. I don't know if you remember that. And it was just, they kept hiking the tuition, and we were paying more than their, their local board was. And then the E.O. Smith thing came up, which was great because the state only required us to pay into the renovations. We didn't actually have to purchase the, even though we're owners, and that was great. Um, and I think, unfortunately, you know, when we've looked at any place will take our kids' tuition, but we have no decision. We don't, we don't get to make any decisions about anything there. And, you know, when, when my kids went to E.O. Smith, we live on the north end of Wellington on the Ashford line. And the bus came at 10 after 6 for high school. That's really early. And, and I actually went to, at the time, the Wellington board had buses, if you remember back then. And um, I went to Dave Harding and said, They're picked, she's picked up at 10 after 6, and they can't even get in the high school. They have to sit in a parking lot for 15 minutes. And they shifted the times back, because he said, that's absurd. They should be sitting there for 15 minutes. They put the time, so, but it's still before 6.30 for high school kids. And then you have elementary school. And for the other side of Wellington, Union is just as far as 
if not farther. Uh, as farther than if we went to Mans, you know, it's tough because of the geographic. I mean, it'd be different if we were a highly populated area and the next community, you know, were close enough by that it wouldn't create these huge bus bus costs and time for the kids. And yeah, I mean, I just think there are a lot of issues that. Um, I mean, we certainly can explore those, but you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult. It is. I mean, I'm glad we're looking at this. One, one of the things I recall Dave Harding saying was that he had approached uh, Ashford at that time, uh, six, seven years ago, I want to say, um, and that we kind of mirrored each other well, and that they were, we were good at the lower grades in the center school, they were good at the upper middle school, and, and that there could have been possibilities. Um, is there anything? Well, I don't know what the incentive would be for Ashford because they have a building big enough to house all their kids. So if we tried to do something with them, it would be a benefit to us because we're we're trying to go from two buildings to one I, building. I, I'm just assuming or they're, they're facing the same demographics and weird classroom sizes that we are right, but, that we could kind of balance each other. But just I'm just yeah. asking. I'm not, I'm not saying. Yeah, they, they've got a. They've got a a pretty good building. Um, but I, I think for me, I don't see that any of those local local options on the table. I just see the Mansfield one, which I also don't find attractive. Yeah. Um, and I think the the risk for me that we're not talking about is the not only having no say, but the capacity that they could say no after a year. If they got if, if the demographics change no, for another I, town, I, I agree. that that I agree for me is the piece that makes me really unsettled. I agree with you. The really I went to all those Mansfield meetings. I was appalled by it. Um, but I'm saying if yeah. we had our own local joint venture with an Ashford Union uh, type situation where. They weren't going to lock us out. We weren't going to lock them out. We were just usually benefiting from each other. That would be a regional school district. It has to be. The state would step it, in it, and it, it's, their... it's either run by the local board of ed in the town, right? So, so like we could invite Ashford to tuition in and pay us money for kids in our school if they had, you know, crowding in their building. We could do that. But then Ashford gets no say. So right the same now, is right true now, if we send kids to Ashford. Right now, if we want to share a resource, like say, special services coordinator. We have to regionalize. We just can't share a a, 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 a uh, special services director between Ashford and Wellington. In some cases, depending upon what we share, there's state laws that make it easier or impossible to do just that. So it would depend on the specific of what we're well, sharing. Well, could you could you share salary on something like that? If you did collaborate sure. or go we into have point five and they have point five yeah. the next right. year, if they decided we're only going to do point two five. And that person walks. It's, point it's, five. it's hard to have a contract or a legal. Yeah, that's the challenge. Right, right. right. So Busing the contract is one of the things that we're looking at here. If you're looking at because Mansfield has their own contract, you know, Smith has their own contract. In a long time I should. We have our own contract, and if Ashford has their own buses. They're out of the mix. I recall the three of us together, the three superintendents, are talking about that. About maybe in the future, looking at a one contract, talking about our start times. So, and that would take all three boards really to agree on it because when you have the right start times, you need fewer buses and you negotiate your contract that way. And so right now, Mansfield and, and um, E.O. Smith share some buses. We can't because we start our middle school at the same time as E.O. Smith. So those are things that we're looking at right now to say there's, there's savings in transportation. Transportation is expensive. I think half of our buses, even when we had the contract, half of our buses, had, we had like half of the number, had to be extra because it, the distances was too far to get kids to the, uh, from yeah. E.O. Smith then to Hall School. Yeah. And so, yeah, that might be one way to... But they don't right now, and this is, this is a quirky thing that we've talked about, is they might drive right along the, the, the mansfield Wellington border or Ashford border. You don't pick that kid up, you just drive by him another bus goes by and so yeah. when you're doing route it just doesn't that doesn't make sense and that's that's why we're talking about it just, you can be more efficient with your fuel you can be more efficient because of you know with your routes which impacts your fuel obviously you can impact bus ride times you can impact the number of buses you need it's, that's why we're talking about it so it's definitely something that will come up this year in, in budget conversations um, for, for our board and I understand things like buses. I was thinking more about Lord was saying in our, yeah. our per people cost. The heading to the stratosphere, 
we have to go into salaries and benefits to make an impact on that. That's where I see the opportunity, not for regionalizing, which no one likes, but sharing of staff um, locally with schools that are close to us. That just makes sense for, you know, the average person to say, gee, why don't we do that? Yeah, in the places where we can share with the town, we already are. So, for example, sharing a, a business person helps us a lot. But I'm, I'm sensing so, so in places where we can, we already do. Right. Where it makes sense. You know, it's not as if we only need half of a pupil services person. We probably need more than the one that we have. So, so looking at the the work that's out there, we've been paying attention to what's there, and we're aware of which state laws allow us to to look at things and don't. So it's not that we're opposed to it, it's that there's there's not a silver bullet there. There's not even a big win there apart from the transportation contracts and really looking at that. So it's and if, and if you did have a situation where you were trying to share when numbers were lower, as Phil said, you lay off a teacher, the word gets out pretty quickly that jobs in Wellington are not secure. And as it is, we don't pay as competitively as some yes. districts, we've had teachers who've left and gotten five, eight thousand dollars more per year. Yeah, I don't need to belabor this, but I, my point was, I don't want to let anybody off. I want to share where the resources are needed. But it's hard <laughs> because the numbers are fluid, and you, you know, some classes are bigger than others, and certain, you know, I, I, I mean, it would be nice if we could do that. I just. It's really difficult with, and you don't even know what special ed kids you're having coming yeah. in. And, There's repercussions. You know. If you were to decide to, to take some of those actions for one year, our decision making for, at the Board of Ed has to be more than just a one year look at the needs of the schools. We can't just make a decision one year for. Sounds like no. Go on. <laughs> okay, one last question. I want to get to the last question here, right? Okay, so question eight is, I believe a renovated or new building would attract new families to Wellington. So this is kind of the economic uh, discussion. And again, it's their perspective, their perspective, but it's backed up by the other research that we've had presented to the board. And uh, two-thirds strongly agree or agree that new families would be attracted if there were better buildings. Um, and uh, less than 20%, 18 percent disagree or strongly disagree that that would not attract new families. So, yeah. So this is, again, this is their opinions and what they, they feel, but that was one of the things we wanted to know about. I well, I have to word this question, the last yeah. one. Yeah. I would like, I noticed two months ago we had um, our email, where, was it email, like fill a truck or something like this, from our town emails. In not board of education emails, but I'm from the town emails. They were collecting food for families in need in our town. Mm -hmm. And they put their very interesting statistics, which shocked me that from, from, from all the children in our school in Willington, 17% of those children are below poverty level. 23% of all children in our Willington schools qualify for the free lunch. So 23%, that's almost every fourth child, mm -hmm. belongs to a family which is not standing really good financially that their children qualify for the free lunch. So I think when we take decisions about or consider decisions which involve increasing taxes, which involve substantial change in our taxation and other, we should agree, we should, we should think about that category of people because if they are hardly making where they are now, and let's say the taxes average will increase thousand dollars just for this, just just for this, nothing else involved, then it it could really hit some families. We could lose that force of the families if they move out of town. And it's not I'm just I just feel bad for those people. They could be young families, which are just establishing doesn't mean that they they're just young. They don't have right. the support. So I think when we take the decision, we should go ahead, spit it out. <laughs> I looked at that same flyer, and I said to Brenda, where did those numbers come from? Yes, that's what I know. Because I said if, if human, that's right, if human yeah. services is using numbers, they need to use the same numbers we're using, or we need to use the same numbers and agree on what we're looking at. I think that data came from census data that's off the internet. It's 
it was I think from two years ago is when it's updated every no, certain that number. They, the census is done every 10 years when they do the other ones it's a very small percentage and it's not accurate that town size for us but I will pull in what oh, our no, no, actual that was for wind and children data. I and understand I and I, I question the data because I wasn't sure I said that seems high but I would pull I will pull the number of free and reduced I would so think we should really look in yeah. there's a financial standing of the families with children in our town. Regardless of what the exact number is, and I think there are questions about where those numbers came from, it is clear to everyone that there are families that struggle with it, that sure. need support. There's and no doubt. A mom. No, one doubts that. Yeah. No, one, no one doubts that, that there are families that are struggling in Wellington. Because we see that, we know there are kids that are that qualify for free reduced price lunch and families that struggle whether or not they have kids in school or whether they're older or younger. We know that poverty exists everywhere in Connecticut and it is not. Well, we have to, it's a big right? percentage though. Every force, it depends, depends it's on a where big you percentage, look. we can't ignore it, so we have to look more careful and take. Maybe we can even look at the number of children who qualify for the free lunch, because oh, you sure. probably know it's an easy statistics, yeah. right. and to see, and the, if suddenly it's a different number, not 23%, I would ask the town to apologize for that incorrect, because that was kind of, uh, that was wrong. Because they were trying to take something out from citizens, right. so that's something that should be. But whether it's fifteen percent of families in Wellington or thirty percent in Wellington, there are a significant number of families in Wellington. I don't think anyone would disagree that that's there. I think the question for this process has to be, what's best for the town and the children and the families in the town? Because if you're paying a lot of taxes on your property and your home will increase in value, then some of that cost of what that will be will be offset when you sell your house. So your $1,000 number, we don't know the accuracy of that either. So we know we, we looked at those at the last number and there are different costs associated with the different projects. I don't want that thousand dollar number to stand in anyone's head because that's not accurate either at this point. But but the increase in uh, increase in value of the house is is not really. Uh, it could typically it could say okay the new school increase, but there are together with that there are negative factors coming. So it's yeah. not one factor. Not like oh let's build a new school. The value of our properties mm -hmm. increase. Oh, 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 I'm talking like a time. I have DJ in economics. It doesn't work that way, <laughs> believe me. So let's, so, so let's look more deep into it, more professionally, kind of, not just emotionally. That's yeah. all that I'm saying. So I will also say I have a degree in economics, so we're even there. And my analysis is different. And the reason it's different is because the amount of money it would take just to keep the buildings okay, just to maintain the buildings, is already high because we have old buildings. We have deferred maintenance on these buildings. Most towns, when they're looking at a building that's 20, 30 years old, they're starting to plan for the next building. Our least old building, our newest building, started 67 years ago. So this is a deferred project we should have been thinking about for the 20 or 30 years. As a community, we chose to build a new library and not to build a new school at that time. But now we're at the point we have to look at not deferring maintenance. So the cost for the capital project, so if we went with the full capital project of option one, is a huge increase. So the cost to build or renovate a new school is really the margin above the maintenance. We have to maintain what we have. And that is going to be expensive because we've been putting it off. So the taxes are going to go up no matter what. The question for this facilities project is how much more would it go up to get an excellent renovated as new or a new building? So we have to look at comparing apples to apples as much as is possible. It's never perfect. And certainly some of these numbers need to be updated before we can make a good decision. But I want to make sure we're comparing and understanding the deferred maintenance costs that we now must pay as a town because we have kept taxes low traditionally over the years, the bill has come due. Well, I can't agree with that. Um, can you explain the difference between 4B and 5? 
um, because it says renovate Hall, uh, renovate is new, but also acquisition of property. So I don't understand if we're renovating Hall, how that has to do with acquisition of property. And number five, if we demolish and build a new school at um, where Center where Center School is, is that what that implies? Um, it's not big enough for ball fields. And right. All that. So so that's where you're getting into it. So four B, renovates Hall, and closes Center. Hall and its fields are not big enough for the whole school building. So it would require some acquisition of property. There's not a ton there because we've got the river around the back, right? So we don't have a ton of space. But it would be to acquire some additional property to make that renovation work. You just remind us what the footprint of all this paper was. It's. <laughs> I was confused by this last time. It's, it's actually, three parcels, that's why. Yeah, it's actually, it's almost four parcels. Mm -hmm. Oh, across the street too. Yeah, because oh, the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. The, the across the street parking lot is. Yeah, so there's it's it's basically when when the building was given to the town, it's basically what you see Hall School sits on right now, over all the way to the edge of the top of the ball field, the the including the the upper field, the lower field was purchased afterwards by the town, and believe it or not, the driveway of Hall School to the back is owned is a separate lot owned by the town. Across the street, Hall Foundation owns the the parking lot across the street and the building including the, the softball field. So that's that's about the it's I think it's around 12, 12 acres total. Including the parking lot across the street? Yeah, it's it's tiny. Yeah. Which that's is why seven. now we bus kids to the fields because we don't have enough field space for the middle school. So I, that's okay. You can ask your question, and then if yeah, because I have to take mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah. How many? You may have answered this. How many folks have filled out surveys so far? 158 as of a week ago, but um, this the numbers we were showing here for were okay. well. Or this is this is where we were a week ago. It, the survey is open till August 1st, right. so we're hoping to no, continue to get more. Of the percentages that you. Have mentioned yeah. so far are off of 158. 157. 157. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I want so I just I'm wanted to get more so encourage people to yeah. Them. I just wanted to clarify the 4B versus 5. So 4B acquires property to do the renovation. 5 is the opposite. It closes hall altogether and then builds a new building on the center property demolishes the old center to make room for the, um, the existing. There would probably also have to be uh, property acquisition in that as well, in five. It doesn't say so on the, the property description. Right, because uh, there's no way to have yes. yes. So in both 4B and 5, there would, pro there would have to be property acquisition, because uh, 5 is not big enough. Is property cost included in 5, though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Why does it say that it's included? Because when we went through it last time, like two years ago, it wasn't included. It's in the line items here. So if you look at this, these, these, all the detail, it mm -hmm. says estimated the demolition cost seven hundred ten thousand, estimated land acquisition seven hundred fifty thousand, estimated site development four hundred fifty thousand dollars per acre. Site development, not site uh, no, acquisition. Right. Land acquisition is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So both of those are included in option five. Yeah. So it just didn't but make it into no, that little box but here. But if there's no land where, available, yeah, where we're going to take it? Is it there around something available around Central School? So when they did this, they're looking at the hey, could you negotiate with the the homeowners that are around there? That's that's what you're looking at. Could you buy the church across the street? Could you? Take a house that's vacant. Did you take the firehouse? Um, they weren't. We're not identifying what properties and the number, and if they were even reasonable, could could it work? You know, if you, the the town owns on the center school land, they own it goes all the way down to three twenty, but it kind of comes to a, a almost to a point. It's a V, yeah, um, but it's sloped, so they'd have to figure out if they were going to purchase some land. Could they even get? ball fields on there if they were to purchase so, so the important thing that's kind of not really on here but we need to, to consider as a board 
is option five, building a brand new school, one school for all of the kids on a new site, not on the existing center site, because there are reasons why that's less workable. It's all wooded, it's really hard to, you know, it, there's a lot of other houses, so that's less workable. Could we find another site? Or, you know, do you happen to know anybody who might donate another Does, site to town, build a new building? Doesn't the town own land across from Fenton Ruby Park? I don't think. So that lot's over by me. I don't think there's. No, I don't no, think that's developable. And there's the old. No, dump. across the street on the hill. I thought the well, town owned some land up there. There is the old dump just south of there. I have looked at properties across the town. Anything that's over a certain acreage, the town does not have a, a site that we know of. That's that was the right? And the young urban has been identified as not being an appropriate site for a school. But there are sites in town, but they're not owned by the town. So we could purchase a different set of property or properties. It does not have to be the ones around center school. If we wanted to purchase separate property and build new, that is an option that is equivalent approximately on cost for option five. It would be acquiring a different set of property instead of the ones around center school and building a new one there. And then what we save with that option, though, is we wouldn't have to demolish center school. If the town wanted to use that for some other purposes, they could do that. So there are some savings in the demolition costs there that might offset any other costs. So the estimate right now is it would be about the same cost as option five. Well, but as the, sorry. as the board would have to, one of the things we'll have to consider when we're narrowing down the options is what we're going to ask Friar to reprice for us. Um, and that is one option that we may want to consider having them price out for us. And if I recall, um, any footprint for the new building for reimbursement by the state would be based on our current student population. It's the eight years of history. The, the previous eight years of history, you take the highest number in all of those years. In each in your, grade. In, sorry, in your projections. You're in your projections. Highest number of each of the in the grades in the, each year. So if we push that up to say 450, if we do that, um, what would the generic? How many classrooms would there be in this single K8? So it's by square footage, so it'd be about 60. You're looking at 60,000 square feet for a K8, pre-K8. And how big are centers? How big are What school? school? 60,000. Dead even. <laughs> it's, it, Hall, Hall is built, has a lot of space that's well above the, the average size that we would need. That's part of the problem why some of these are so expensive is because we would, not, right now, we would not get reimbursed for parts of that that are over. And right now you couldn't fit that 60,000 on the current space available. Correct. We could not, we could not reconfigure that to work. So it would be a smaller footprint than the two schools combined, but it would be more efficient. About 16,000 square feet. Is what's allowed? Or For what's allowed? our numbers, and I'm just trying to find them. It's what would be reimbursable, counted in the reimbursement. Right. As so a community, if we wanted out. to add extra space above and beyond that, that, we would be paying It's small, for it. but this is this is what the, is off my community engagement presentation. <laughs> this is the NASDAQ enrollment. I just wanted to give people a sense of where it came from. And so this is the projection that they, the state would take and they'd look at and say, okay, the highest number for kindergarten for eight years is the bubble. The highest number here is the, for fifth grade is the, the circle. And you would basically take that number and that's how you determine the size add up and they multiply the it by highest, square footage. The highest and you need a certain grades. square footage for an elementary student and a certain for a middle school student. And it's, our total is around, based upon this, is around 60,000 square feet, which is why uh, that's how they built this. And what's the square footage of center school now? About 30. Okay, I was going to say about half of that probably. Yeah. yeah, the center school doesn't have the quirky spaces that Hall has. Hall has a lot of, it. like if you go into the, the library alone, there's so many little offices and closets that count into their square footage that you, that's why it would take a major floor plan renovation. Um, and the other piece is to, to put all the kids in the hall is to, you have to meet fire code. And so it's not, you can't get elementary kids in there right now because of the fire code. So. And how many square footage, sorry, 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 it's center school. It's about 30,000 square feet right now. And hall is 60? Yes. Plus there's handicap accessibility and stuff. 
Yeah. And if you were really renovating, mm -hmm. we haven't talked very much about 20 21st century learning yeah. and the changes in education practice that we're mm -hmm. not able to keep up with because it's no longer classroom rows of desks yeah. kind That's of philosophy. Point. And those schools were all built for classroom rows of desks. Factories. Yeah. So you know, how much land do we need to buy a new school? So what's the requirement? with the land for the school? Was it this whole school, center school, or new school? How much do we need to fill all the needs? I think it was between I, 15 and 28. I think at the elementary level is 10 acres plus one acre for 100 students. And then the middle school is 15 acres plus an acre for every 100 students. So, so if you were going to build, um, we looked at uh, Stafford's to see field space, what you need, and you need about 15 acres just for field space. So I think if you're looking at, you know, land, you're probably looking at 30 acres if you want your fields on your campus, on your at your school location. So 30 with fields, yeah, 30 yes. acres. Mm -hmm. Correct, Stafford. Yeah. yeah. And with fields. And I just fields... basically took the GIS map off of Stafford and drew lines and said, "There's a softball field, that's, and that's based on our current sports: softball, softball field, library. baseball <laughs> field." And well, soccer that's field. I'm not in that's my not that's not in that softball field, baseball field, and soccer field. If I drew a, a line around those, people, and I, and the reason I was staffed is because they're right next to each other. We knew <laughs> you it, could do that. And it was about 15 acres for middle school size fields. So, so those six, uh, 30 acres would include, we, we need 50 acres for the fields. No, 30. No, 15. 15 yes. for the fields. That could be included though, realize that could be included in your number that you need from the state. So if you said, hey, we have a 20 acre spot, that could that could be sufficient. If you could for find- one K-8 school. Correct, if you could find the perfect flat level lot, yeah, right, in Wellington, <laughs> um, that was uh, about, <laughs> that was about 19 acres because it's the 15 acres plus 100 uh, uh, one acre per hundred kids, about 19 acres. If you can find that perfect lot, that would give you 15 acres for the fields and four acres for the parking and the uh, school. That's probably around what you would need. But so, that would mean it was perfect. No. And if you have steep slopes and and uh, wetlands, or right? Or and rocks. that's why I said I looked yeah. at lots just to see what was out there and see what's available. And you mentioned what? What about Fenton Ruby? Well, some of the spots that I, I had ruled out just to see what was out there, and it's my raw look at it, is really there were roads, roads that need to be improved in town. And if you add that on top of a project, how's that going to fly? If you start looking at, hey, we need to pave now five miles of road to get to that school, you need to widen it. You're talking millions of dollars. Um, yeah, it's like so, the property we looked at on the pond we live on before we bought the property we have. It was 12 acres, it was lovely, but you would pay more for the driveway than the house. And that's that's where site <laughs> yeah, exactly. development is really exactly. important, is the money that comes into site development. You know, if you have, you could be gifted a plot of land, but you might spend a fortune developing it because of access to the, you know, the, the sewers. Land, exactly. How, where's the driveway go? You've got to excavate half of a mountain. You've got to... You know, so those are things that would have to be considered. And if there's a recommendation, then they could look at here are the potential, you know, locations that we could, you know. And that's for the building committee. So that's right. something if the board of ed were to recommend to the town, and the town were to vote to establish a building committee, all of that site information and site selection yeah. would be theirs. That's not anything that we have to assess, but we know that it's a minimum if we want to have the fields attached to us and not have to transport, we'd be a minimum of 19 acres. People were asking, and that's why I looked. People were saying, yeah. do we even have a spot? Mm -hmm. And the, you know, yeah. we don't have a spot right now. Are there possibilities? Yes, the answer is yes. And the, my question is, why are we in a hurry to have it done by September and not giving people a chance to come back from vacation? and involve people in September. That's actually autumn are the that's most active <laughs> the most active months. As the Board of Finance has already asked the Board of Education to um, come to them in November, I believe, with some information because a lot of people are tired of the fact that we've been talking about this. I was on the Board of Ed how many years ago? Eight Eleven years, years ago, ago eight I, years I ago. Um, eight years ago <laughs> and we were talking about it 
a good portion of the time. I would, people are tired of talking about it, and if you put it off too far, you have people in town. Or, yeah, they're just they they don't really want to do anything. So the board of finance said said let come to us in November, and that gives you a little time to get started. And you guys were already kind of getting things going because you knew that this it was happening, and you just you have. I mean, this was out in May when people were still here and they weren't on summer vacation. And we just have to, I mean, I've been getting notices from the town. I mean, I knew about these meetings. It's hard because not everybody's signed into the town information, but I think you have to set some deadline and you have to move forward. And, and the Board of Finance wants to, you know, know what's happening down the road. I mean, you know, we have some, you know, I, I disagree a lot of times with like Barry. But Barry has a lot of good points about, you know, we need to do something and it, and we've got to we've got to start moving forward and I think that's that's part of the reason. We've got yeah. to have well, some. Well the reason, my, the reason my September and not October. Yeah. Because you had just so the reason about that timing is that in order to move along, we can only apply for state funding once a year. If we miss the June deadline for whatever reason it's the following June. So it delays the program for an entire year if we miss that deadline by one day. What so is the deadline? The deadline, uh, the deadline, is, the deadline, the deadline is in June. Next June. Next June. It would have to pass referendum. There's a whole lot of work that needs to happen for us to make it for this June. And it is a tight timeline. I would have rather voted for this in May. But we've had a lot of hiring and stuff we had to do to get started to get to this point. So we've extended it even further so that this is about as tight as we can make it. If the board does not vote in September, we will not make this June application, and it'll be another year's wait. So that's why the last possible date we can vote as a board of ed to move this out would be September. Why not October and then give people September or August and beginning of September activity and waking up after vacation? We will not make the June deadline. But if, if it is, uh, if we need to submit that information in November to the Board of Finance. She's talking about a different timeline. She's different talking time about a whole different state, timeline. Whole different ah, timeline. that's not connected no. with the yeah. Board of She's talking about the state. The state but, in yeah. order to get their ah, approval because we, on Because in order to apply for the funding, we have to know what kind of school we're building. We need to have a lot of information in a place, lot of in a world. lot of things. <laughs> so um, it means the building committee is going to have to start right away and move quickly and do a lot of additional meetings. So I would argue that the our meeting is the second Tuesday in September. If people are back from vacation by then and have opinions, they can come to either our, our August or our September meeting and give us feedback. So it is after vacation and after school has started. We've been talking about this for years. Uh, this process alone has been months in the making and has been on, you know, we've been talking about it at like every Board of Ed meeting for a while. We've done as much as we can. The additional people we might get for waiting that month between mid-September to mid-October is not worth missing the June deadline. And it still doesn't guarantee it. No, it still doesn't guarantee it. Because it, it's out of our spend hands. All this, the, if there was a building committee for a renovation or a CIP project that was bonded or a, a new school, when it goes to ref, you could do all the work. You could do all the ed specs. You could have plans drawn up. You could spend money on architects. You could do all these things. And when it goes to referendum in May, if it fails, That's you have to have a next step. What now? And that, could, that doesn't matter about the application. That's like the final piece. With all due respect, that, that seems somewhat cynical to me, uh, to say that we have to be on this fast-track timeline. I agree with Laurie to the, to the extent that we should have the Board of Finance get us information, like in August, so they can do some financial impact assessments. Then, coupled with you guys picking what you want, and knowing that financial impact, it would seem reasonable to have September at least, if not part of October, for the town to digest it. The town has been digested. Been digesting digesting you and I have been years. talking about this at meetings for a while already. When did this I, come I, out? I, I disagree. What? When did what? the survey come out? But, but you're doing this in such a um, isolated way. We have, I recently attended a town meeting where the fire department is seeking the church site in your very location for a new building they would like to have. The other fire department would like its own fire complex elsewhere. The town office building would like to have a better facility. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it doesn't seem like 
I frequently hear this when I have my coffee at church on Sunday morning. Uh, people will say to me, gee, the town of Ashford built a combination library, public safety uh, uh, building. Why are we always doing things piecemeal? And it seems that way here. And you guys can get what you want, but it would be potentially at the detriment of the entire community because we're not looking at our space rationally. Coupled with the fact that it sounds like we have a large amount of space in Hall School, and your only solution is tear down. Um, we, we have space uh, available in the old senior center that no one is looking at. We have the, well, this building, which seems underutilized. We have the old town hall, which is essentially empty. Uh, it, it doesn't seem, and this is not your, I get your, I get your award of it, and you're looking at what you want, um, but it doesn't sound like you're working with the rest of even the, the, the town's agencies, let alone explaining this. But Peter, that needs to come from the selectmen. That's not their it's purview that to too. go looking to other people to see what else we can add to our project. That's why the Board of Finance wants the Board of Ed to make a decision one way or the other, so then it can go to the town. So when we make our, our vote in September, the, if we vote yes, it would go to the town selectmen to create a building committee, and that's where they talk about: Do well, we gee, build a school? We should, maybe do yeah. we do we want to we want to leave the the center school standing and not demolish it so we can move that down? The, the those decisions office, yeah. are the the building committee. I understand that. Yeah. So so that. all we're in control of is our vote to recommend well, that, or not. That means your recommendation could fundamentally change. Yes. Our this is that's would, what would it be better to kind of. Figure out the process is as it is. We don't have control over the Still way it has to happen. It's a recommendation to move the process forward if that's the way we want. Okay, vote. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so in the seems in, less rational to me, but um, and the, the the community still has lots of places for input. There would be if we voted if we vote to move it to a building committee, and if the building committee wants to move ahead and design ed specifications, people can come in and say. Let's say you were a swimmer. You could come in and say, you, you, I want a pool in this school. I don't care if we have to pay 100%. We need a school because we need a pool attached to our school. You could say that. And the community could rally around a pool, and they want to add an extra million dollars for the pool, and we could do that. There's nothing that says that that process couldn't happen. It's just the, we can only talk about what we can control, and our control is recommend or not recommend. One of the frustrating things that Mansfield's going through right now is they there are very specific requirements about reimbursement. You can't do anything with community and build school. You get penalized in your square footage in your reimbursement rate if it's not school based. Makes sense. It, to some degree. Which is well, but if you wanted to be, have you want your, to pay for your fire complex. If right. you, so listen, the if we wanted to have, have to take think that about this account. library. If there was land right here you could attach this to Right? If you could attach a school to your library and you had access to a public library and you don't have to build a library, that would be great. But you get penalized for if you were to do something together. More than just paying full freight for the library, there's an additional penalty. Yeah, they take yeah. it away from your reimbursement. Yeah. It's, they take it, factor it into your square footage. The superintendent from Mansfield was, was living that because they were trying to have community space. If you did it for, like Hashford has done it, and that's how they, they did theirs. I don't know if they did. Um, when they have community spaces for training connected to their library, the school's not connected to it for a very That's specific a public reason. library, yeah, right, yeah. Like, like this. Yeah. So in other words, you could, if they just, the town decided to build a fire department and a new town office building, that would be fine. They could do those together, but as soon as you try to attach the school, the school funding they, starts to go away. They, yes. Okay. The State yeah. Department of Ed doesn't care what else you're doing. Unless it's attached to a school. They don't want you to fund anything that's not education related. That's how they see it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah there's, it, there's a lot of devil in the details with a lot of this. So there is going to be room for the community to have more input. I'm sure the building committee, if they move forward, will have comments about site selection. We'll have comments about you know what should go into the building of a school to allow the pool people to make so their it, case. Or I mean, there's a lot more room for community yeah. decision making. There's never going to be perfect information for any group of us. There's always going to be the one last option or consideration. So.
So we do the best we can with what we have. This process has been ongoing for a long time. We heard the Board of Finance. We've been discussing it, and it's time for the Board of Ed to make a decision. So I will put on the agenda for September, if we have the, the numbers, to move ahead with the Board of Education vote. So the September meeting is a really important one. So, I knew you were going to ask. Let me look it up. Um, do you have it there, Phil? Okay, you can look it up. So is, uh, did I hear correctly that Ten. one of the... September. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues with little, the smaller students, is they have to be on the ground floor. That's is that because floor. regular steps are too big if they're, if you have a fire drill? What's the it's, reason for that? So the fire code basically says if you're, I think it's pre-K through first grade, they have to exit on ground level. Is and it because they, of the stair issue? If they, they don't they exit on the ground stairs. level and they're, they have a shared stairwell, it has to be, the, you have to make it their own stairwell. And it has only, more to do with not the height of the level. steps than the speed at which an eighth grader might flee a fiber like <laughs> knocking over all right. the pressure. Yeah. So it's all so the, the, the teachers. If it is, yeah. if, if it is, <laughs> if it is reserved level. just for the the K one two. And that's that's part of I know that's been part of the discussion that I think a lot of people are like, well, yeah, let's just let's just move center school over a whole. I, I don't think it's a. a it's not an easy thing because you're never going to be able to build and because the aerials are even out of yes <laughs> all of their things have to be accessible yeah, yeah. so you have to remember we're just, sink, you're, we're just talking about classroom like if your classroom's on that ground level well then they have to go to pe how do they get to pe and they have to have their own specific stairwell that's how do they get to the cafeteria? Actually, because of the way the hall is laid level. out. The hall is like five layers. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's the, yeah. That's why major renovation, major floor plan reconstruction is in that option, and that's the reason why is we've gone through that layout and tried to move classes around and to try and put them into um, you know the correct spot so they can have access to everything. The cafeteria, the gym. Where's the office? And the fact that that cafeteria is two floors high in the middle of a building. That's part of the major renovation yeah. that we make it one. Yeah. So those are those are things that, you know, it would, it's one of the main issues with why can't we just put everybody in. Fire code really restricts what you have. And you want kids, you know, you want elementary kids near a nurse's office. You want them near the office. But how do you send them down? You can only send them down one level and it's like, I think it was second and third grade can go down two levels, two flights. It's just there's it's quirky. Mm -hmm. And I'm just picturing Hall School. I've been in that building many times, and I still never sure <laughs> which, <laughs> which way to go up or down. Yeah, um, yeah. I have to have a guide. Yeah. <laughs> and, and imagine if you're in a panic, right? You know, you can just imagine that building is not especially well laid out. So it would, that's one of the reasons why the renovation is so expensive. If we were to do that. <coughs> So the renovation of the whole school, if they will go with the adoption, does it include reading everything up to code? Yes. Renovating it has to. So whatever, whatever the walls are open, they're going to be brought up. To You're required to. Thank you very much. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, thank you, Lori, yeah. for coming. Up to Remember today's, to September 10th? today's code, correct. Uh, okay, so it's included. It's not like, oh, okay. we did not include that wall. And it it's, needs. You have to. It's okay. If they this is any renovation project and this is the, the feedback we've got from the engineers is the danger you find in renovation projects is, and especially a building like hall is when you open a wall you could have factored some sort of you know it's i'm crossing my fingers for our oil tank our, our oil tank comes out of the ground or the digging starts next week there's no reason we believe there's any leaks no issues every test has come back perfect when they dig if they find an issue your costs would go up ten, 10 times. And that's the same thing with any renovation project, is that's what our project managers have told us, not Friar, outside project managers and engineers, people that do this for their living and you know, in their jobs, have said, you may have, um, and I hate the word soft cost, but you may factor in 10% additional for problems to come up. But if you have one significant problem that comes up and you didn't, you didn't know it was there, you could have some issues. Their recommendation, um, and I'm saying the engineer and the project manager has said, if you are moving towards considering a renovation project, you need to have, um, I forget what they called it specifically, do you remember what they called it? It's like a, a, 
it's like um, it's an assessment, a risk. It's a risk analysis assessment that's just around. Okay, so we know the age of the building. When you open up, what what is the risk when we, if you were going to do this in et cetera, If you were going to do this at all, what would the risk analysis be just around those materials? You know, how much worse could it be? So they had recommended if that is the direction that that would be a recommendation, a recommendation to the build um, the uh, select. If it's a renovation project that's recommended, you should do a risk analysis before before finalizing that yeah. decision because once you you know go further down that road, you want to know. You could open a wall and find asbestos you didn't know was there. You've got if you've got kids in the building using half of the building, you know, and yeah. the, the the risk is much higher for a renovation. Right. Another question: If we go with any of the building options, whatever we choose, obviously it's not a three months project. It's probably a year, at least, maybe two, year and a half. The project, which one option? Well, the, let's say whatever. It's still going to be a school year involved. At least one, if not Any two. of these options, do they include the relocation of the children temporarily? Mm -hmm. Do they include the price includes or doesn't include? Yes. yes. Yeah, they put, they, put they have in. the temporary classrooms. Temporary. So, that, so that, that space is included in all of these. This, to me, is a big one because I can't stand paying for something that I'm just basically exist. paying for hotel rooms, how I see it. It's a classroom for kids, and I, I would love to see what Tolland is spending on theirs, mm -hmm. because when they do Birch Grove, and they decide to put up temporary classrooms, they're basically doing the work already. If you drive up to Birch Grove, you can see that they're leveling the fields, they're extending the fields out, and they're basically bringing in trailers to have a, basically school while they renovate Birch Grove, um, because of their foundation. They have got to be spending millions it's just not going the into anything. They're just it's a it's a temporary location. You're not getting that money back. It's not an investment. You're spending it. It's so, and that's why I say it's like a hotel room. You're not getting any value. You spend the night there and then that's it. You're you're out. I think in one of these options, and I have to go back to which one it was, but I think it was one point four million um, in one of these options that was in that was the cost of the temporary classroom. The temporary classroom. Can you leverage the whole space in, in a period like that? All of this includes some of that leverage. You still need some temporary classrooms. You wouldn't. We, when you're doing the build as new, you can build the entire build as new and then move the students. Similarly, the other renovate pieces has maybe we move the fifth graders and move the fourth grade. You know, there are some. There is some movement already factored into these. Option four A has one point four million dollars in for swing space. And that then disappears after the project. So that was one trailers. thing that the engineer and project manager, the two people we, we've talked to about this, um, that were asking questions, also said, you know, you have swing space. Your I don't think option four B has it built in, um, and the reason why is they were they were assuming that which option is four B. Four B. Four B is the closing center, renovating hall. You have to figure out. There's that's not in this one. And if you're going to do a major floor plan reconstruction, you couldn't have kids in the building. You couldn't move kids around. I think you'd have to figure that out. Could we consider? I don't know. If that's considerable, I don't know. For example, if we choose to build one school, we don't close one school. If we, but right. is it is it there? Even I'm just thinking right now. Is it something that we can look in there if we build a new school on the new lot? Can we just don't touch the old schools? We just, yeah, we we just, that, that's we that option away. I was describing. Yeah. The cost yeah. of five, five B. It's like a five B. Right. You don't pay or, for the demolition. Right? We don't. Or so it's if, even less expensive because it doesn't pay for swing space or demolition of the old building. Or for example, if we decide if the option goes in uh, where we renovate and do one whole school. Then can we use the central school and just make classes temporarily bigger and fit everybody in central school temporarily while there is a work on Hall School? Is it something which was considered or no? You wouldn't be able to get all of Hall School students into center. And then you could what get you, the center kids into Hall because of the fire code. So center, center every square, yeah. every inch of center school is used right now. If you if you increase class sizes to the mid 20s you might free up a couple classes you might be able to get like a fifth grade there 
but, but you, you couldn't still, get the whole group in. Okay. So we are at time, yeah. but if you have any last burning questions that... Thank you. There are lots of additional opportunities for, for input. This is not the final part. Even our vote is only the start of the next phase of conversation. So. I think it was very useful. This, this meeting, great. we yeah. put it at once, all the possible questions, opinions, thinking. So I think it's good to have it. So we just need to get more people out. Yeah. Well, why, one last question. Is it fair to say that the board seems to be leaning towards uh, the K-8 Sutter School model? I think when we had talked about the ones on here, the options that we were most likely to eliminate, it was one and two. The option about three has to do with um, Hall School. We don't own Hall School. So because of the expense and the lack of interest in these, I would say that they're more inclined to one school than two schools. And that one school being some obviously, these are saying we don't own Hall School. Right, but the one school could also be or a new some, school. Could be, somewhere could be a new school, right? So, but combining the grades, if 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 there were pieces, we did not take a vote. We didn't do a scroll. No, no, this not is everybody was there. Uh, I think yeah. that the the if we're to renovate the the two buildings, it would be as expensive as building a brand new school on a new lot by by a factor of two. So why would we spend twice as much money to renovate two buildings, one of which we don't own, when we could build one new building? Question for the building. It is a good question for the building committee. An that's true. It's kind of like yeah. doing yeah. your doing your apartment over with <laughs> great appliances. <laughs> right, right. Why, why are you not your apartment? Then you have to move out. So, so some of this is about value for our dollar. Some of this is about investing in infrastructure that the town owns and then could continue with. Um, some of it's about how do we provide excellent quality 21st century spaces with as least disruption as possible to continue to provide for the education of the kids. Because that's really what this is driven by, is what we think the kids and the teachers and the staff need. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming out on a Saturday. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. On a beautiful Saturday. I have people, guests coming from New Jersey.